What's up everyone? I hope you've all been doing great. My name is Veronica. If you're new here, I talk about all things fashion, sewing, and sustainability. So for today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys what you can do with your scrap fabrics. I am a zero waste brand, zero waste designer, and although I'm not always creating patchwork designs, I do keep all of my scraps and I have them all organized so that whenever I do end up with way too many scraps, I can start working on patchwork projects. If you guys didn't know, textile waste takes up 5% of the waste in landfills and textile waste is constantly just being thrown out from designers to industrial companies, which the majority of that textile waste is from large industries and companies. So it's, we're not all to blame. Important thing is that as individuals and consumers, we have the power to control our waste and what we throw out. And in this case, I try and save every single one of my scraps so with all of that introduction, let's just get straight into the video. The first thing you'll need is a clear ruler, an erasable pen or chalk, pins, fabric weights, and shears or rotary cutter. And of course, you're gonna need your fabric scraps. The first project is to use your scraps as pillow stuffing. For my pillow cover, I cut two square pieces of fabric 16 by 16 inches. I sewed all the way around the edges and left a three inch opening. I flipped the pillow cover inside out and I started stuffing the pillow cover with the scraps. The scraps do make the pillow have a bit more weight than regular cotton stuffing, but it's still a great alternative. After filling up your pillow, you want to fold in this extra seam allowance on that 3 inch opening inwards and hand sew the opening shut. This is the simplest way to use a majority of your scraps and now you have yourself a new decorative pillow. For this next project, we will be doing some quilting techniques. I cut another two 16 by 16 inch squares out of sheer fabric. This used to be a poly chiffon curtain. I placed the fabric weights on every corner to hold the fabric down and I took my heat erasable pen and I started to draw some shapes to follow whenever I start sewing. You can draw whatever shapes you like. This part is all up to you. After drawing it out, I sewed all three sides and I left one side open. You then take your straps and you start stuffing the cover just like we did with the pillow. I ended up filling it up too much and it was too thick whenever I started sewing it so I recommend to do a thin layer of scraps so whenever you're quilting, you don't break a needle. After you've gotten your desired thickness, you want to pin the opening shut and pin in the middle of the cover to keep everything in place. And now you're ready to sew. As I started sewing, I followed the lines that I drew and from there I just kept going and creating my own design. I created this as a sample, but this technique could be applied to many different designs in many different ways. I've also seen this be done with a water-soluble fabric, which is plant-based and dissolves when placed underwater. The next project is also a sample of a technique you can do. I cut a long rectangle piece of fabric and I sorted out my scraps and ironed them flat. Placed them on top of the fabric in no specific way, I just layered them on until I was happy with the thickness. I also cut the excess fabric that was hanging out from the middle so that I could fold the fabric in half and it wasn't too thick. I pinned everything together and now you're ready to take it to the sewing machine. I first sewed all of the edges around to keep everything in place. I then started to sew lines down the fabric with a half inch space in between. I then grabbed my scissors and I started to cut down the middle of each space so the inside fabrics peeked through. I quickly regretted using a thick canvas fabric for the outside fabric because it easily frayed, but this is another great technique that can be applied to many different designs. The next project is to use your scraps to patchwork. I have an entire video explaining the basics of patchwork and I teach you how I made this silk triangle headscarf. To learn more about how I made it, make sure to check out that video. To sew it together, I French seamed all of the edges so that they were nice and clean and then I did a rolled hem on the edge. But another great use for your silk scraps is to make scrunchies. I have this pattern I made that is 16 by 4 inches. With the leftover scraps from the headscarf, I pieced together to fill up the pattern, making sure the long side of the pattern lined up with the straight green on the fabric. I first sewed together the two pieces together and I ironed the seam flat. I then folded the fabric in half long ways and sewed the edges together, leaving a one inch opening towards the end. Now 
You then want to tunnel one end of the fabric inwards to meet up with the other end and pin the ends together, making sure to align the seams. You then want to sew around the ends very slowly. This part can get really tricky, so you want to get slow. Then you're going to flip the fabric back out through that one inch opening. You want to grab some elastic and I like to measure it around my wrist to see how long I should make it. I then grab a safety pin and pin one end of the fabric so I can tunnel it through the scrunchie and I pin the other end on the fabric so it doesn't get lost while I'm tunneling the other end. To reach the end, you want to put your elastic pieces together and sew them together, making sure that the elastic on the inside isn't all twisted. Put the elastic back into the scrunchie and sew a top stitch on that one inch opening and now you have a silk scrunchie. The last project is to patchwork some pants. I also go more into depth on how I made these jeans in my patchwork video. But I basically just cut some fabric scraps into squares and placed them over the holes of these jeans. I pinned everything in place and I hand sewed all of the scraps onto the jeans. That's all for today's video. I hope you guys liked it and you learned something new. There are so many different possibilities and so many different takes and designs that you can do with all of these different options. And I hope this video inspired you for your next collection or your next piece. And now you finally know what to do with all of the scraps that you've been holding on to. And if you're not holding on to them, now you know why you should. Comment down below your favorite technique or your favorite design that I did and I will try and incorporate it into a future design. And make a whole video about it so please subscribe so you won't miss out on it thank you guys for watching and i'll see you in the next one Bye.